All right, in health news this morning, when you talk about birth defects, you might not realize that the choices women make can actually help prevent certain conditions in their newborn children. And Dr. Caleb Bupp, a certified clinical gen geneticist with Spectrum Health, is going to talk to us about fetal alcohol spectrum disorders and recognition of National Birth Defects Awareness Month. Thank you so much for being here with wow. us. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So first of all, let's kind of in general tell people what birth defects are. Yeah, so with any pregnancy, um, there's always the change that a woman could have a child that's born with some sort of physical birth difference mm -hmm. and um, there's a baseline risk of about two to three percent for any pregnancy mm -hmm. uh, but there are some things that we know that can uh, cause birth defects things that can be done to prevent them um, and I think no uh, knowledge is power with something like this sure and they come in different levels of, of being extreme right yeah exactly so it can be something uh, like a you know a club foot or a cleft palate or something more significant like a heart defect mm -hmm. or something uh, even you know more more serious than that and as a mother of a nine-month-old I did everything I could to prevent anything from happening to him but so are birth defects preventable as well. Sure, uh, and I think that's one of the most important things is that sure there's always going to be a risk but there's some things that you can do, things that you can be proactive about and I think that's what helps empower people um, as far as birth defects go. Mm -hmm. And one of them is avoiding alcohol, right? Yeah. What happens when a mother who is expecting uh, drinks alcohol during yeah, pregnancy. Yeah, it, it's, it's a big issue uh, because if, if you think about it, you know, a mother or a woman who's pregnant, uh, if she drinks, the baby drinks. Mm -hmm. um, and babies are just not set up to be able to process alcohol. And we know that uh, there's a risk for any woman who, who drinks during pregnancy uh, to have that affect the baby mm -hmm. in a variety of ways. Sure. Um, there's really no, no safe amount that a woman can drink while she's pregnant. Yeah, so it's called fetal alcohol spectrum disorders, right? Yeah. What happens, and if, what can happen to the baby when it comes to birth defects if this is taking place? Yeah, th this was uh, really first noticed in the, in the early 70s, um, and what they first noticed was some physical differences. Mm -hmm. uh, children who have been exposed to alcohol during pregnancy can sometimes be a little bit smaller. Their heads can be a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. They have a couple unique things. The, the area between your nose and your lip is called your philtrum, and it's smooth. It doesn't have the ridging there. Oh, okay. And their upper lip can also be very, very thin. Mm -hmm. um, so there's some physical things that we sort of identified and were able to see. Sure. But as time has gone on, we've now seen there's, there's almost a, a pattern of learning issues and behavior problems that these kids have that's a little bit unique as well. Sure, and I know there's so many studies out there, like a little bit of wine here, a little bit of whatever there, and I mean, all doctors just say it's just best to try to avoid it altogether, and that's not us preaching to anybody, but that's just kind of what the bottom line is when it comes to those FASDs. So if people kind of are concerned about someone that they know is pregnant who's had a hard time getting away from the alcohol, what can they do about it? Sure. So. Um, you know, one drink versus lots of drinks, there's no way to predict sure. to say if one person has this amount, this is going to happen if another person has this amount. So, uh, you know, if there is concern, there are things that can be done once the baby's born to sort of evaluate the baby, to look at them, to see if there are some of those physical differences. Sure. Um, we have a clinic at Spectrum Health that uh, specifically sees children who either have known exposure to alcohol or even who have suspected okay. exposure to alcohol. And we kind of look at them, we evaluate them, we look at sort of their behavior and some of the issues that they've had, and we try to sort of, you know, you know, help the family where they're at. Is this stuff that will be noticed right away or is this something that can kind of come up later in the child's life too? It can certainly come on later in life, especially sort of the, 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 the learning issues, the behavior problems, things like that. Uh, sometimes won't be noticed until a child's in school and really struggling. Mm -hmm. um, kids w who have been exposed to fetal alcohol, um, they have trouble making decisions. Sure. They're a little bit more uh, hyperactive. Um, and certainly a lot of kids are that yeah, way. Absolutely. So it's a little hard to tease it out sometimes. Okay, some great information. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you. Sure. And once again, Spectrum Health's FASD clinic is all the details are right there on the screen for you. Uh, for more information, call 616-391-2319. And